Yoga, what's up? Tactical Bastards. Uh, I'm going to do a video on, uh, just an, up, an update video on cleaning products. We haven't done this for a while. And I like to do it like at least twice a year. Because there's always new stuff coming out. And I like to give you my opinions on stuff because, uh, you know, that's what I do. And, uh, yeah, I'm still hanging with Ballastol. Uh, I've used so many different kinds of new products like Frog Lube. I like Frog Lube. It works really good. It doesn't stink. You can, uh, you know, you can clean your gun in your living room without driving everybody nuts with fumes. That's what's good about that. Um... I'm becoming a fan of M Pro 7 too. Uh, this is just the oil. See, this is the problem. This is why I like Ballastol so much. M Pro 7 is a real high quality product, hands down. We use it at the shop. This is just the oil. We have the we have the squirt bottles of the cleaner too, which I will get, which I will purchase because there's another product with no fumes at all. If you have M Pro 7 cleaner, you know what I'm talking about. You can clean your guns right in your living room and there's no smell. It's it's really, really mild and it does a good job. But like I said, here we go again. You have a cleaner and then you have an oil, two separate things. It's not a big deal, you know, but what I like about the ballastol is it's all in one. And it's in it's in the form that I like perfectly. It has the spray. Um, the problem I have with uh, frog lube is when you it's it's just it's not hard to applicate, it's just it's annoying to applicate. You know, you have to pour it. You know, I would get like a brush and pour it on like toothpaste and then start brushing. I don't know, I just don't like that. I like this bell stall because you can give it a nice mist. Okay, don't put too much on and then clean your whole gun and you're done. I just like the aerosol can or even the, uh, the M Pro 7 has a good system. It has the, the pump, which is great. So I'm, I'm definitely going to pick up a, a a uh, thing of Empro 7 today at the gun shop before he sells out of it. But the newest stuff I have been using is Empro 7 and the oil is great and I used a cleaner at work and the cleaner is great. I can clean guns uh, when the day's slow. I can clean guns right at the computer desk and I don't have to worry about offending customers with odors or anything. That's what's it's really good about this product here and same with Frog Lube. Ballastol's got Definitely has a, a, a fumey odor. It's not as bad as, as hoppies. Nowhere near as bad as hoppies. This is like, you need ventilation for this. But, uh, you know, I know I'm diving into this fast, but I just want to get to a lot of stuff. As far as cleaners go, the strongest cleaner here. I know you guys are probably saying, how come you don't use CLP? I just don't like CLP. When I first got into guns, I always used CLP. Then I discovered Ballastol. You know, then I discovered other things, and, and to me, they're just a lot better. I know the military uses it. You know, not everything the military uses is the best. It doesn't mean it's the best because the military uses it. A lot of it's cost-effective, too, guys. Don't forget about that. CLP is a good product. I just can't stand the smell of it, all right? It smells like a rhino's twat. So I, I don't have CLP. Um, but it does work well. It's very effective. It's strong. Uh, hoppies is super strong. I, I barely ever use hoppies. Sometimes I'll use it because when I first got into guns, like years ago, when I was a younger, almost a kid, this was the, this is what we used, and it just brings back memories that that smell. But if you have something that's really tough to get off, like if you have, uh, I'm trying to think of something. Say you have like brass on your ramp, on your feed ramp. Man, you put hoppies on it, it'll, it'll come take it off like that. It's really strong stuff. And I told people before, if you get magic marker, your kids get magic marker on your table or something, this stuff's like nail, nail polish remover. It'll take it right off. And uh, it works great. I, I use it for more household use for stuff like that. So, uh, the Ballastol is still at the top of my list. I love it. It's just so universal. You know, it, it lubricates. It protects. It does it all. I don't need oil. I just ha I just use the ballast on. It's done. It doesn't smell the best, but it's just fast and it's so easy to use. It's it can totally multi-purpose. Weapon Shield's a good one too. Uh, it does clean and lubricate like ballast off, but like I said, the application I don't like. 
I wish they had a pump spray or an aerosol can. But Weapon Shield is really good stuff. I used that. I haven't used it in a while, but I, but right now, I am a, sorry. <clears throat> I'm a, gagging over here. I am a, getting a, familiar with M Pro 7. It's really good stuff. You guys have been telling me about M Pro 7 for a while. I figured I'd give it a shot. As far as oils go, definitely the M Pro 7. You know what it smells like to me? Put some M Pro 7 on your finger. It smells like band aids. Like band aids. Like a box of freaking band aids. Which is a nice smell. And then we have this. Uh, this is really good oil. It's called Wally's Original Rapid Fire Lube. I don't even know if the guy's still in business. He's in uh, Linden, New Jersey. But uh, this is really good lubricant. I love it a lot. And the M Pro 7 is awesome. Uh, as far as lubricating goes, they, they all work good. The Frog Lube, uh, what I use this mostly for is if I'm cleaning my guns in an area where I don't want to, you know, I don't want to stink up the house. And Frog Lube's great because it lasts a long time. And it's a, it's a great, this particular section of it, this tube, this, this tube of it is great for putting a little bit on a rag and wiping your gun down, wiping the outside of your gun down and preserving it. It works fantastic for that. And it's, it is a great cleaner too. But like I said, I don't like the applicator. I don't like that you have to drip it. It's like when you know when you clean the barrel, you got to hold the barrel and you're, you're dripping it in the barrel, or you, or you just put it on it. I just don't like how to applicate it. I like this because you can just get the barrel and just go spray in the barrel. Boom, it's ready, and you put the barrel aside, let it sit. Uh, but I understand why they can't make that with this because it's too thick. But the Frog Lube does have a little miniature pump cleaning system. I haven't used that yet. We sell that. I'll, I'm going to try it and I'll let you know what it's like. Uh, I sprayed it on my hand and, and felt it. It's a lot like M Pro 7. It's very watery. So, I mean, if you ask me, you know, what should I get? You know, what, what's the best to use? It's hard to say, you know. We have, we sell Ballastol, we sell Frog Lube, we sell M Pro 7, okay? What else do we sell there? I'm not sure if we have Hoppies. I know we sell those three cleaning products and we have a, a case of each one and the Ballastol is always the first to go. We're always reordering it all the time. Because it's not because necessarily it's the best gun cleaner, it's just the easiest and most convenient gun cleaner because of the spray can and the nozzle and it's all in one. A lot of people ain't like us. You know, we're, we're very complex. You know, with our guns, we're very, very tedious. Well, there's a lot of new gun owners out there. They don't care about all that. They just want to get the gun clean and put it away. They don't care. You know, guys like me, we like to clean the guns. We like to try all the different stuff. It's fun and all that shit. They're not into that. They probably will get like that later, but they're not like that now. So they just grab the Ballastol and they're out the door. All right? And it's cheap. You get a whole can of Ballastol like this for 8 bucks at double action. The M Pro 7, it might be a little bit, a couple more ounces more. Man, man, that thing went $20 for that damn thing. That's a lot of money for friggin' cleaner. So, but like I said, I'm, I am going to get a, a bottle of it because I like it. I like it a lot. All right. And another new system that was introduced to me. People have been trying, people have been telling me about boar snakes forever, and I just. I never, it's not that I didn't give them a chance, I just never got around to using one. And I always use this kind of boar snake, which is cool for the rifle or, you know, whatever. This was like the first kind that came out, I guess. And these work alright in a pinch if you need one. Uh, what's cool about this one, you can put different brushes on it, like you can unscrew it. And then put different kinds of brushes on it. I could put a mop on it, I could put a steel brush on it, I could put a... Uh, uh, you know a plastic brush on it, which I like to use the most and that's what's cool about these But the problem is when you pull it through they don't buff out and buff they don't mop the barrel out at the same time That's what that's what stinks about these kind This boar snake I just started using the system and I'll tell you what I Can't believe how well these work. I was working What the frig was I working? I was working Sunday with my friend Steve Steve's a police officer He's a really cool dude. He, he teaches me a lot. He taught me how to run the register. Dudes, I never ran a register in my life. I'm a friggin' idiot, okay? I was a welder, you know, I was a contractor, carpenter, you know, jack of all trades, but I never did stuff like handled cash and all that stuff. 
I was like scared to death of it, but uh, I still am. And you know, I'm, I'm doing okay. I still make mistakes. Ask Mike. <laughs> Every time he adds up the receipts. What the hell's all these voids? Uh, I made a mistake. But he introduced me to the boar snake. And he goes, you ever used a boar snake? I said, nah, they're kind of expensive. And are they that great? He goes, they're unbelievable. So what we did was, we got the Ruger SR 1911. I think that's, I have the right model. And we rent that gun out. And, and they people shoot the living hell out of that thing. And we haven't cleaned it in like, I don't know, six weeks. So we took it apart. And he demonstrated on the barrel of that gun. You should have seen the barrel on that gun. It was just gunk and gummy and, oh, it was horrible. And all he did was, I forget which kind of gun cleaner. It might have been Ballastol. He just sprayed a little sprit in the barrel. Zip, zip, that was it. And pulled the boar snake through one time. One time. He pulled this particular boar snake, because you got two steel brushes here and here. And then it, as you pull it out, it mops it out. One time, and he said, now look in the barrel. I only pulled it through once. I looked through the barrel against a white surface, and it looked like a, a crystal mirror. I mean, it, looked, it was a, like a diamond. I couldn't believe it. So it would take me, at least to get the barrel that clean, I would have to get this, scrub it back and forth, and then... After I was done, I would have to use probably at least between seven to ten of these before the barrel looked that good. When he showed me that, I said, I gotta, I gotta buy one of these. So I bought one. I bought one in 9mm, I got one for 45, and I got one for my shotgun, most of all. That's what he's really great for. And I cleaned my Glock with it. And same thing, because I shot my Glock that day. My Glock 19, yes, it's running great, no failures. I'd shot like shit though. Ever since I did the trigger job though, it, it runs really nice and smooth. But I, I cleaned my Glock, I pulled this through it about maybe uh, six times. I probably didn't even have to do that. I pulled it through once and the barrel was clean. But I pulled it through about six to seven times because, you know, that's how I am. I'm, I want to make sure everything's this is just amazing. Amazing. And they last a really, really long time. As long as you don't force them in the wrong caliber barrel, these will last for years. Okay, if you if you try to force them in a barrel it's not meant for, and you start squishing down the the uh, the steel brushes, you're going to screw it up because they are expensive. But it's worth it. Put the money out. Buy a boar snake from Hoppies makes these for each caliber. Just buy one a week or whatever. They're expensive. They're twenty bucks a piece. But I am definitely a boar snake fan now. I don't have to worry about wasting knees. I don't have to worry about, you know, putting this together and, you know, scrubbing it out. Just pull it through about six times. I mean, that thing is crystal clean. Now, granted, it's not going to clean the whole gun. It's just, it's great for the barrel. You know what I'm saying? But that's the most important part. That's the most dirty part of the gun is the barrel. So, yes, I am now a boar snake fan. Got one almost in every caliber. Okay, it's going to save, you still need, I'm going to still need my patches, all right. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Now, a lot of people use toothbrushes. Now, this is, is, this is a real toothbrush, which works fine. If you don't have anything else, you use your toothbrush for cleaning the, the base underneath of your slide and the frame. But if you get this brush, which is, it's like two, three bucks. This is, looks like a toothbrush, but it's a, it's a gun cleaning brush. The best thing about this brush is this side, because of its real skinny, slim shape and you can get in all the little all the nooks and crannies this I find one of the most helpful tools to have when I'm cleaning a gun especially if you're running out of patches this comes in super handy because you don't need patches really you don't um, what I usually do is and it works so well this is my Gen 4 a Glock 23. I love this thing. It's so reliable. What it's great for is cleaning underneath the slide. Is uh, let's just take the barrel out. Okay, the guns, the barrel's clean and all. Now you got to clean the slide. What's dirty? The face, the the uh, the face plate where the uh, the firing pin comes out, and the uh, the extractor inside the extractor. 
all in here. It's all coated. What's good about this is this will fit everywhere. This will fit in these little valleys in here. This will most importantly fit right behind the extractor, right up against the, the uh, I don't know what the hell you call it, the firing pin wall right there. And it, it'll clean your extractor perfect. This is great for that. But another thing this is good for, if you run out of patches, don't worry. You just get a rag like this. You throw the rag on top of the, you know, throw the rag on top of the uh, spray, bail store, whatever you use. Throw the rag on top of the gun. And then you just get this and just clean it like this. Different portions of the rag. You want to clean the face of that off. You want to get even. You want to get into the grooves here. Just just keep the rag a nice thin rag. There it is. And this is like a microfiber rag. It's really thin, and you can get everywhere on this gun. All right, and just once in a while, just switch the position of the rag. Because that's what we do. I mean, that's how I clean them at work. Because these things they can get expensive. You know. So if you run out, that's what I do. I just use the rag and just keep flipping it around, and it does just as good a job as these would. And uh, you're using a rag over and over again, you save a lot of money. And I do the same thing with this. Now this pointy one, as you know, in the slide here, I don't need it for this gun, but when, when you're doing 1911s, there's a groove here, and then you go, you go over to the right a little, there's another little groove that goes even deeper, all right? So you use the toothpick end, the real sharp end, same thing with the rag, and it'll get all the way down into that channel and you can really clean your 1911 really well and it also gets in these guide rail channels here really well it gets really in there really good these just little stupid tips that you won't you wouldn't think about <laughs> they make gun cleaning so easy everyone's like oh you need this for that you need this for that now you can compromise and find other things that work just as well and save money so but I love this Glock 23 right now I got the big dot excess sights on there they're good for uh, self-defense. They're good for shooting while moving, which when, when do I ever do that? Never. But uh, you can't, they're, they're, not, they're not good for shooting bullseye. I mean, it's, uh, the problem is because the, the dot is so big, it covers from about 15 yards or 10, 15 yards out. It's going to be hard to shoot pinpoint bullseye shooting. They're not for that, but they're great for self-defense. You put that big dot on the target, you're going to hit the target. You're going to hit the threat without a doubt, okay? That's what they're for. They're for like a panicky situation, okay? But I don't know if I'm keeping them on there. Right now, I'm, I'm going to keep them on there. I don't know. I was looking for, uh, I had these True Glows this guy sent me, the fiber optic ones, and he sent me brand new ones. I don't know what the frig I did with them. They're somewhere. I got to find them. I'm going to put them on and give them a try for a while. That's what's great about Glocks. You can take the sights off, switch different sights, and you can do it right at home. You don't have to be a gunsmith. They're so much fun. But, uh, yeah, that's what's, uh, that's what's going on with the uh, gun cleaning update world here, what we have here. Um, this is a mop. Serves the same purpose as this side is of the boar snake. So now I really, don't, I really don't need these anymore. All you need is the boar snake. Very, very cool. But what these are good for, another, another thing these are good for is cleaning out magazines. If I took my Glock once, once in a while, you should do that at least every every few thousand rounds. I'd say every 2,000 rounds. Take your floor plate off your Glock, take everything out, and then put this on, you know, a rod. And this is great. Just, just spray a little cleaner on there, just a little. And you can mop out the whole mag, it cleans it out really, really well. So, you'll use everything, don't throw anything out, you know. So, um, another thing I wanted to bring up, someone asked me about all these upgrades on this uh, Gen 4, I'm happy with them. Yes, and I'm so thrilled with them. I love the, um, the extended tab from Glockmeister. They make the best ones when it comes to these, these right here, the takedown tabs. Glockmeister makes the best ones. Now, as far as magazine, I mean, uh, slide stop extensions, Vickers Tactical Tango Down has definitely the best ones and the best magazine extensions. They're friggin' beautiful. Yes, I'm happy with them. I'm having no problems with them. I love the Packmeyer glove grip. 
It's one of the best grips you can put on your gun because it's thin. It doesn't increase the width of the grip. It does a little bit, but if you, the hoe really increases it. It's cut out for the finger groove, so it keeps the gun slim. It doesn't change the size of the grip too much, and it sticks to your hand really nice. That's all I can really say to, to your question, dude. Yes, I am happy with all the upgrades I put on my Gen 4. I highly recommend it. Leave the recoil spring alone. That's all I say about Gen 4s. If you have one that's running good, don't touch the recoil spring. Don't get a steel one and upgrade it. It's just leave it alone. Let it run its thing. Okay, you really don't need to upgrade the Gen 4 recoil spring. They did upgrade it. They made it tougher and stronger. You know what I'm saying? It's got that double recoil spring in there. It's just more sturdy looking. But that's it. Um, all right, this has been going on a long time now. I've been getting so many questions about these friggin' Armory Channel shirts. Uh, I'm going to take a poll. I'm going to ask you guys. Here's an Armory. This is the Armory Channel shirts. These are cool shirts. I, I, I do really well with them. People love them. Every everywhere I wear it, I always get a compliment. It's, a, it's the 1911 100-year anniversary shirt. That's what it is. And, you know, we made the design. Uh, a couple friends helped me with, this, with the design in the back. It has the regular logo in the front. As you can see, it's on the left side of the chest. Not too big. It's clear. It, it looks good. It doesn't look, like, gaudy and big. Okay, nice, it's just like maybe a three inch diameter, nice and small. And then on the back is where it makes the uh, statement of the 100 years, 1911, from 1911 to 2011, and most importantly, which is not bullshit at all, it is still on duty. And people really like this shirt. I'm going to get more made, but I need to, I don't know how many to get. Last time, I did this, um, people said they wanted it, they wanted it, they wanted it, and then I ordered the shirts, and then, uh, yeah, I ended up with a, a, a case of them just sitting down there, but uh, the, the, other, the other times I did it, uh, they did well, a lot of people liked them, they're very reasonable, they're Gildan, I get Gildan because Gildan run a little looser than Fruit of the Loom and Hanes. I don't like Fruit of Loom and Hanes because a double X and a Fruit of Loom and Hanes straps down my man boobs. They're too small. Gildan makes it just right. So we're going to stick with Gildan. Uh, just uh, go to the email below the video. I'm just taking a poll vote, okay? And just write yes for the shirts. Yes, I'd be interested in a shirt. And just send me an email. Just say yes, I'd be interested in a shirt, okay? Um... And then I'm going to take it from there and I'll decide if it's worth it doing or not. Because if you only get a few of them made, it costs too much money. But if you get more than, like, say, 50 or 60 of them made, then they give you the, the shirts for a good price. And you know me, guys. You, we've been, you've been buying these shirts for years. They're 20 bucks free shipping. You can't, you can't beat that. Unless it hits 3XL to 4XL, the price goes up a few bucks. That's because they charge me more money for those big shirts. All right, but just go to the email under the video and just give me your little vote. Yes, get the shirts made. You can just write that. Yes, please get the shirts made, something like that, okay? And then I'll call the shirt company and we'll start getting these made. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon.